What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Joel Bravel and I'm a second year medical student. I've been on summer vacation for the past few weeks, but summer is starting to come to an end. Now that it's August, I know a lot of students that were once pre-med are starting and getting ready to enter into medical school. If you're like anything like I was when I was entering into medical school, you're kind of freaking out. You're worried about how you're gonna study and what kind of things you're gonna be doing. You're moving to new cities, you're moving in. Everything crazy is happening right now. So I want to give you some tips on medical school and things that I learned over my first year. So in this video, I want to focus on three different things and I'll make sure to include the links below with the different timestamps so you can jump around between and listen to whatever you want. The first topic is going to be resources and study material that you can be using. The second topic is going to be supplies you should have for medical school that'll make your life easier. And the last topic is going to be about wellness. Now you can make sure that you are keeping yourself safe and sane during medical school. So on the first point, resources. The first resources resource I'm gonna share with everyone is this one right here. If you're a medical student, you know exactly what this is. This is the holy grail, it is first aid. First aid is really important for the USMLE step one test. Um, and one thing that I've been doing with this book is whenever we have a unit that I know the chapters in here, for example, biochemistry or cardiology, I'll skim through first aid before the actual block begins and then as we're going through the block. That just helps me make sure that the material I'm learning is actually translating towards the STEP exam. Starting in January 2022, STEP is actually going to be pass-fail. Right now, STEP is a metric um, score-based exam, and oftentimes the score you get determines where you can go for residency. You still are going to have to pass the STEP 1 exam, so making sure that you're ready and you are prepared to actually do well on it is going to be rep important regardless of what year you are. Okay. Next up, we have Anki. If you haven't heard of Anki yet, you will hear about it in medical school. Anki is a flashcard app that uses spaced repetition in order to really get details into your mind and make it stick. One thing you're going to hear about in medical school all the time is always eat your pancakes, meaning you can't let your pancakes stack up. If every day of your school year is a pancake and every class is a pancake, you got to eat them. So at the end of the day, make sure if you have five pancakes, you get them done. If you don't, by the end of the week, you're going to have 35 pancakes you have to get through and that's going to give you a stomach ache, aka you're not going to be able to get that material into your brain. So Anki is an amazing way of making sure you space that repetition, you're constantly hitting the cards, um, and you, if you want to learn more about it, you can go to Reddit or I might make a future video about it. Next we have one of my favorite resources called Boards and Beyond. Boards and Beyond has tons of videos online, over 400, that medical students can use to supplement their in-classroom work and also prepare for step one. For me, it was incredibly important, especially for cardiology. I literally just watched all the videos and it helped make so much sense um, and put into context a lot of the things we were learning in the classroom. Boards and Beyond also has practice questions that you can use if you really want to get additional questions um, and, and practice the things you're learning in class. The next resource is Osmosis. I loved Osmosis throughout my year. I feel like Boards and Beyond is one of those kind of high level things, but osmosis is where it really builds the foundation that you need to understand the science concepts. Osmosis has really clear, concise, and easy to understand videos. One of the things I love the most about it is the fact that all of the videos have these cute cartoons in them. Um, I really like to be, I'm a very visual learner, so being able to see things happening helps me out immensely. And so if there's a concept like blood flowing through the kidneys or whatever it is, be, being able to go on, on osmosis, they have tons of videos on there and they all make a lot of sense. With osmosis, you can also set up study schedules, which has been really helpful for me in particular. You can also do things like clinical reasoning. There's practice questions that you can be taking on there. And so osmosis, if you are very visual like me, is super helpful. The next resource I'm going to suggest is called Sketchy Medical. Sketchy is an amazing platform that's really helpful in particular for microbiology and also pharmacology. Each sketchy video uses recurrent symbols and themes to try and associate facts that we need to know to specific symbols. For example, in the video about Staphylococcus aureus, we're introduced to vancomycin through, a, through the image of a van and recurrent throughout whenever we hear about vancomycin as a treatment, we're going to see that van in an image. And that just helps you as a student associate that picture with whatever bacteria, fungi, virus that you're learning about. For me, it's been really helpful because whenever I'm on an exam and I see a specific concept, trichomonas vaginalis, for example, I'll uh, remember that exact image of what I've been, of what I was looking at on Sketchy. I'll know exactly what the answers are. 
Lastly, one of the things I would recommend students doing early on for resources is get practice question banks. Um, one of my favorites so far is US USMLE RX, and there's tons of questions. I think some people are worried and say that you should hold off until dedicated, which is the time we're used to studying for STEP, in order to actually look through these. But I found that there's so much material that if you start now and you, you can, even on these, you can actually specify cardiology block, anatomy block, different different topics that you want to split out your, your studying by. And I guarantee you're not going to remember the answers to them. Well, hopefully you'll remember the answers to them, but I guarantee you're not going to remember the questions a year later when you return back to them. So my suggestion is get these question banks, not too many, but get at least one question bank early on and just do some practice questions. Get in the groove of what it's going to look like for these future board exams. So one of the courses that everyone's going to have to go through is anatomy. And there are some great resources for, for anatomy out there as well. One of my my resources for studying anatomy is called Complete Anatomy. It's an application that you can have on your computer, on your iPad, on your phone, and it pulls up an actual 3D image of the human body, and you can search by different body parts, different nerves, different veins, arteries, whatever you're looking for, you can search for it and it'll isolate on it. It's one of I think it's one of the coolest apps that are out there right now, um, and it definitely makes studying anatomy easier. A lot of medical students are also going to be online this year, and I think it'll be increasingly important to really have that spatial understanding of what does the human body look like. Completed anatomy can really help with that if you're not going to be able to go into the cadaver lab personally. And if you're more of a book person, I definitely suggest Netter's Anatomy. Netter's is the classic book to go to. Um, I have like a mini Netter's Anatomy, and that's been really nice to just be able to flip through really easily, see what I need to find, um, and understand things pretty quickly. Um, it, it helps especially with like insertions and origins for different muscles. Um, so if you, if you like things to be visual in a book, uh, an anatomy book uh, like Netter's would be great. Next, we're going to be talking about supplies that you should have in medical school. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little biased. I love Apple products. I have a MacBook, I have an iPhone, I have an iPad. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the, the product you're gonna be using the most, which is your laptop. So here is my handy dandy 15 inch laptop. I love this thing, this thing is my baby. If I lost it, I don't know what I would do, not joking. Um, I literally bring this with me everywhere and it has all my information on it. Your laptop is going to be like your baby. Medical school is moving so much online and you're not going to have that many things that are printed out unless you want them to be. I actually bought a new laptop as soon as I got to medical school and that was because I wanted to make sure that I had enough space on it that um, is quick enough for the things that I have to do. Especially with Zoom, if you need to invest in a new laptop that is able to handle um, lots of people on a call at a time, that's able to handle multiple applications open, do that because it'll make your life so much easier. Next supply I would suggest everyone get is actually an iPad and bring a case too. I love my iPad too. Like I said, I'm Apple through and through. Um, I have a keyboard on here that I can use all the time. I actually have one of the Apple pens and I have a case on here as well that makes it really easy to use and a stand. So that if I don't want to use my laptop and I just want to carry my, my iPad around as, instead, I can easily do that. So students at my school got really lucky. We actually got our iPads for free, but honestly, if I hadn't gotten it for free, I probably wouldn't have gotten it and I would have regretted it because I love this thing so much. I do all my notes on here. I watch all my videos on here and I won't do a video. I won't explain right now, but I use OneNote, which is this right here. I literally have every single one of my lectures inside my OneNote that I'm able to write right on the slides when I want to. I can import them um, onto my computer or on my iPad. They both sync together. That's the other advantage of having multiple Apple products. If I have something on here, I can easily pass it off to there. I can copy and paste things between my iPad and my laptop. I can open up articles. I can airdrop things in between them. And if your friends have them too, it makes it super easy to airdrop additional information to one another. I don't want this to sound like an Apple commercial, but I really do like Apple so far and it's been really helpful for medical school when you get a lot of material and you need to be able to organize it really well. And lastly, for you new medical students, I just wanna talk about personal wellness. So as many of you probably know, you've heard about burnout in the medical community. Burnout is where you lose of the love of your job, you're no longer enjoying what you do, and it can lead to increased rates of suicide in the medical profession. Medical school is not an easy time. You're studying a lot, you have to sacrifice sometimes going out with friends or hanging out with family, um, and it can be really just mentally taxing dealing with that much information and being the, a high achieving person wanting to do well all the time. When we first got to medical school, one of the things that I loved that my dean always told us was that there's three things he really wanted us to focus on. The first was our personal health. The second was family and friends. And lastly was the job, AKA studying to become a doctor. 
And I think that's so important. We often don't put our own personal wellness and health at the forefront. But in order to be successful at anything else that comes after, we have to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves so we can take care of our future patients. One of my favorite psychology terms that I think is so important to understand in medical school is the concept of growth mindset. Growth mindset is a psychology term that was coined by Carol Dweck, a professor at Stanford University. What it means to have a growth mindset is that you thrive on challenges, that when something hard comes your way, you don't see it as a stumbling block, but something as a stepping stone to lead you to the next position that you're trying to get to. The opposite of a growth mindset is a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset says that your traits are static, your character is static, and you can't improve on things no matter how hard you try. In medical school, you have to have a growth mindset. Things are not gonna be easy. The first time you go into a patient, you might mess up, and you're probably not gonna do it right at all. First test you might have, might, you might, might not do as well as you wanted to. But understanding that these things are things you're gonna improve on and that medical school is a journey will make things so much easier in the end. My next tip for medical school in terms of wellness is to make sure you find eight to 10 things that help you decompress when you're stressed. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm serious. Eight to 10, not three, not four, not five, eight to 10. And the reason why is because Sometimes one of your, your stress, stress management coping mechanisms might not work and you need to kind of switch things around. For me, um, sometimes I like to go to the gym, but if I'm in a really bad mood, I can't convince myself to, the, to go to the gym. So finding some way to cope with your stress is really important. The last thing I wanna talk about is imposter syndrome, something that everyone faces. Imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern where you feel that you might be a fraud wherever you are. So for example, if you're in medical school and you are feeling imposter syndrome, you might start telling yourself that you don't belong there, that other people are so much smarter than you, that you shouldn't have gotten in, that it's all a mistake, instead of realizing that you should actually be there for your own merits. But I think the important thing to realize is everyone's facing this. Everyone at times will feel like they don't belong, that they shouldn't be in medical school, that things are too hard. The best metaphor I can think of is kind of like a duck sitting on water. A duck on the, on the top of the surface looks so calm and normal, but underneath it's frantically paddling all the time to keep itself up. In medical school, everyone's gonna come from different backgrounds. Some people have majored in science. Some people have majored in theater. Others have been out of school for seven to eight years. So understanding that your skill level is not gonna be the same as other students is important. It'll help you be able to find people near you to reach out to and learn from. As important as it is to study, make sure that you get to know your friends around you and your classmates. They're going to be your biggest support system the people that understand what you're going through, and the people that can help you out when you're having a hard time. So I hope this video at some point was helpful, but essentially I wanna leave you future medical students with this, that you belong, that you matter, that you're gonna be an amazing doctor. No matter what anyone tells you, know that people like me and others around you are rooting for you. And if you ever need someone, I'm only an Instagram DM away, a YouTube message away, a YouTube comment away, anything. Um, I love helping people out. And I've had my fair share of struggles uh, getting to medical school. So if you need someone to talk to um, or you need someone to just vent to, um, definitely let me know. I'm here for you. So best of luck in your first year of medical school. You're going to kill it.